Hi everyone and welcome back to another card making video. Today I'm going to have some fun with slimline cards and I will be playing with products from the latest release by My Favorite Things. Now, it was really hard to do, but I tried to pick my top three favorites from the latest release, and I will be playing with these butterflies. They do have a matching die, just like always. I will be playing with the spring gnomes, as well as the high-flying adventure. So let's start with the butterflies. These have a very modern design and you will see what I mean in a bit. And uh, let's start with stamping the main design, the intricate design for the butterfly. When you want to go with a slimline card, one way to go is to repeat the same element again and again. Just use different colors, which is exactly what I'm going to show you for the first card. So here I will uh, repeat an element, which is going to be the butterfly in this case, and I'm going to stamp the butterfly three times. And here is me realizing that I need to leave more space at the top of the butterfly since the tie is going to cut out above that design. So I'm going to repeat the same thing at the back stamp my design making sure that I leave more space at the top. To complete this butterfly there are two more stamps but just to make sure that I'm going to stamp them correctly and they're going to match with the die cut, I better die cut it first so I know exactly what space I have left. So I repeated the same process, stamped three times the butterfly and I cut it. Now it's time to do the rest of the stamping, for that I just created a template for myself to make it easy. This way I will place the wings at the top of my Misty once and I will be able to stamp all three butterflies since I have that template there. And this is what I was talking about previously, that uh, this is kind of a modern looking butterfly. I absolutely love the graphic design, so you see that the wings on top do not fit on the intricate design. However, they do fit on the outline. I am going to stamp that one more time so that I don't get a splotchy look. I didn't prep my stamp in the beginning, that's why I got that look. And uh, I have a bunch of inks on the side here, going uh, rainbow order, as you can see. Now I'm going to put inside the template the second butterfly and I will uh, stamp uh, the top with uh, yellow and that's pineapple. And for the third I used blue raspberry. Now I'm going to align the second set of wings at the bottom of the butterfly and I will have purple for uh, the blue top green for the yellow top wings and finally orange for the red. All the exact colors are going to be linked down below. I want to have some movement on my butterfly, that's why I'm using that tool to press at the body and add some uh, uh, movement on the wings. You can definitely do that with your fingers if you don't have uh, these tools and uh, this is going to allow me to add clue where the body is which is going to lay flat and at the back of the wings I'm going to add some foam tape. I'm going for a slimline card base that is 3.5 by 8.5 and, and I did die cut a panel that is uh, out, made out of uh, off-white vanilla cardstock and that's 2.5 by 7.5. I'm going to align the butterflies on top. I'm sticking the butterflies with glue underneath their body, but they do have uh, foam tape on the wings, so they are going to be nice and fluffy. I am going with Tacky Glue by Simon Says Stamp, and this is a great design. You just have to repeat the same element in a row, leaving enough space in between your elements to add your sentiment. Another tip that I can give you for such a design where you repeat the same element many times, just make sure that you repeat it odd times. It's always more pleasing to the eye. I did use foam tape at the back of my panel. I'm going to stick it on top and you can uh, decorate your butterflies if you like with some uh, sparkly uh, gems or uh, sequins just to add something extra on top of them. You can go monochromatic on each one of the butterflies. You can even use your favorite coloring medium to color in those intricate designs on the wings. I decided to go clean and simple and I also channeled my inner Laura Bassen here. So I went uh, rainbow ordered and I absolutely love the result.
Every month my favorite things come up with super adorable and so cute stamp sets that it makes it really difficult to pick a favorite. So for today I'm going to use the High Flying Adventure. It comes with lovely bunny creatures on top of um, four different designs of uh, airplanes. I picked just one of them. I'm going to stamp them with alcohol friendly ink and I did stamp a bunch of little clouds. And I will go ahead and do the coloring. For that I'm using my Triblend alcohol markers. I absolutely love the ease of use of them. Just having the three shades in one barrel is a winner for me. So anyway, back to the designing of uh, slimline cards. So in a stamp set, when you have a smaller element, you can repeat it as I did in the first card. Another way is to look on your stamps and see if you have something which is quite long. Here I have an airplane, which means that I can easily cover up a bigger area and I can create a little scene. I'm going to give my airplane a banner, which is going to allow the design to be extended, to be longer. So it is going to cover up a bigger area and my card is not going to look quite empty. I also stamped a bunch of clouds which are going to work as fillers throughout the sky to make it look more interesting so it doesn't look too empty. So I will continue to color everything. These are small areas and I just used two shades of the same color to add the shading. I used the matching dies to cut out the designs and the dies come even with dies for cutting out the clouds. And I'm also going to use this banner die set that gives you two different sizes of banners, a bigger and a smaller one to add your sentiment. And since I'm going for a slimline card, it's better to use the longer one to cover up more area. Now I have a panel here which is 2.5 by 7.5, just like I used for the first card. I'm going to cover it up with ink. I'm using um, Distress Oxide ink here and uh, I'm making sure that I don't apply the ink super flat. You see I have some areas which are darker, others which are lighter. You don't want to have a sky which is completely flat color. It would look better if you have some splotches here and there. I'm going to bring in a darker shade of blue and add a little bit on one side only. And this is going to be my background. And now it's time to put everything together. I'm going to stick the plane on one side, leaving enough space for the banner on the other side. Let's put the banner together now. There is a little stamp set that has lots of sentiments that you can use and it is called Banner Day Sentiments. It comes with a bunch of sentiments that have a um, kind of a curve, they are wavy, so they're going to fit nicely on those two dies, the smaller and the bigger one. I decided to use the bigger banner and that's why I'm going with one of the bigger sentiments that says you are awesome. Now I do already have some glue on the other piece, let's put those two together. I do have foam tape at the back of my airplane, that's why I did add foam tape here as well, so everything is nicely leveled. And you can see by adding the banner, I do cover up more areas on my background, so it doesn't look empty. I'm going to spread out the clouds here. I like to have them kind of interacting with the rest of the design, so some of them are behind the airplane or the banner. And as a finishing touch, to make the card extra special, I am adding some blue gems around the design. It's a lovely design and in the banner you can have any kind of sentiment that you like. I think it would make a lovely card for pretty much any occasion. You can see here some close-up photos and if you notice carefully you will see that I did use my white gel pen to add some highlights on the design. Another slimline idea is if you have a stamp set that has many critters, then it is perfect to create a little scene with grass and just uh, arrange all the little critters along your card. This is exactly what I'm going to do with this super adorable stamp set, which is called Spring Gnomes. I'm going to stamp all three of them and a bunch of other images from the stamp set, like the carrots, the eggs, the flowers. At this stage it's better to stamp more than you will actually need for creating your little scene so that you don't have to go back and uh, stamp color and die cut again. So I did stamp a bunch of flowers leaves, some of them I'm not going to use, you will see at the end, but I will use definitely the three gnomes along my card as well as lots of the eggs. 
Now again I'm using my three blends and there are two styles of three blends, uh, the ones with uh, a brass nib and this one that has a um, fine tip nib. This is uh, fun to use when you have to color in so small areas. I tend to grab the brass ones because they are easier to blend but uh, I'm happy that I have a few in my stash from uh, the first collection. And here I'm coloring the grass but I decided not to, I'm just going to use the dye and cut out grass. So anyway, after coloring all the gnomes and the eggs, I went ahead and used the matching dyes to cut out everything. And if you notice, I did use uh, pastel colors. I wanted to have an Easter vibe on this card. And let's put the card together. I have a panel here, which is 3x8, as I'm going again for a 3.5x8.5 um, card. So this way I end up having a slightly smaller panel, not as small as the two cards that I made previously. I'm bringing in one of those stencils that help you create the clouds in the sky and I'm going to quickly blend some light ink color there. It doesn't have to be super long, you can see that I'm working with a stencil that would work on a standard card, but uh, you just uh, go ahead and move the stencil over and extend the design. I go very lightly with my ink, mainly where that line of the stencil is, and I didn't even bother to stick the stencil down. Uh, you can see that my stencil and both my uh, card is moving, but I don't really mind that uh, clouds and sky it doesn't have to be perfect. When you are creating a little scene with your critters, it's always nice to have a die that cuts out grass. I'm using this long one, but if you have a smaller one for standard card, just cut out a piece, then move the die over and make it longer. You can work with what you have. And with this grass die, don't throw away the top. You can uh, turn it over and use it as a second layer. For the second layer I'm going to use a foam tape just to have some dimension there and this is going to give me a way to tuck in between those layers my eggs as well as the carrots. Now for the gnomes I decided to go directly on top of the grass so I do add a glue at the bottom but I do have a small piece of foam tape at their top so that they are nicely leveled. But of course if you want you can tuck them in between the two grass layers or even far at the back. I have uh, die cut some of those grass pieces using the dies included in the matching stamp set. In terms of aligning all those elements on top of your card, just make them come together somehow by overlapping elements, helping them uh, come together. Don't just align them one next to the other with no overlapping. So here I have some uh, eggs behind the grass or the carrots behind the grass. Some of the grass is on top of the gnomes. Just make it look more interesting. Plus, don't align perfectly the creatures on your card. So notice here, none of my gnomes are at the center and I did create a part of two and another one on the other side. It makes it look more interesting. You can go with Happy Easter for this card. I decided to use one of the sentiments from the same stamp set as the gnomes that says you are a friend like no other. I absolutely love this type of uh, sentiments. And I did some masking so that I could uh, have half of the sentiment in one of those uh, speech bubbles and the other half on the other speech bubble. I do have these ties for ages and I will try to find them if they are still available and link them down below for you. I think they are perfect for creature cards. Here are some close-up photos on the third card for today and probably my favorite from all three, although I like them all. Just make a, a comment down below and let me know which one of the three cards was your favorite for today. So I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired as I created three slimline cards while sharing ideas on how you can put a slimline card together with what you have. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll see you all next time.